All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and man, this is a crazy finale, man. I mean, first of all, just to get the win, and of course, I'm going to talk about how this affects our draft positioning and our chances of getting a top player, most notably like a quarterback in the draft. But like, if you think about it, bruh, this was the last game we were going to play as the Washington football team. The final game, we have the numbers on the side of the helmet. The final game that we have those jerseys. And even though I wasn't like the biggest fan of the Washington football team, it started to grow on me because I was the type of person I'm going to make anything. I'm going to flip anything and make it a positive. So I just kept emphasizing the in football team. Like we were the best, like the Bronx, the Ohio State. And so it is kind of crazy that we're about to no longer be the Washington football team like ever again. So, you know, it's kind of bittersweet because it was kind of fun. We had some fun seasons, not great seasons, you know, no playoff wins. And I mean, two losing records technically, even though we made it to the playoffs last year in a really bad division. But we had some really fun moments last year and this year. Last year, I guess, you know, for making the playoffs. And then this year, the Taylor Heineke ride and a lot of guys stepping up like rookies and, and low-key free agent signings that like developed right in front of our eyes, like most notably John Bates. There were a lot of good things to take. From. I already did a video on that too, the 20 positives to take from this tragic season. So y'all already know me, man. We're going to go position group by position group and talk about the coaches as well in this game review. But I just wanted to go ahead and get it out there that this is the last game this was the last time you were going to see the washington football team do anything in the nfl we will be something else later more than likely the commanders either way we'll know within less than a month which is also crazy in itself so i'm excited i will do a video review when they finally showcase the new logo name jerseys and all of that but i will also do a live stream so make sure y'all pull up and i'll probably open up the phone lines for y'all to call in and critique everything and talk about whether you like it or not and all that type of stuff so that's gonna be a really fun live stream february 2nd remember that date i will also be live streaming the senior bowl because this is going to be the most exciting senior bowl i've ever seen since i've been alive as far as quarterback prospects you have bailey zapp kenny pickett malik willis desmond ritter and Sam Howell all I don't even know how they're gonna split up the time with all of those top quarterback prospects literally everybody but I believe Carson Strong no even even Carson Strong is gonna be there too so it's literally all of the top seven draft quarterback prospects except for Matt Corral that's crazy so I'm live streaming that but right now we're currently sitting at the 10th pick we need the Falcons to win which hurts for me to say out loud but I mean we need the Falcons to win and then I think we'll just end up with the 10th pick as our final draft pick for the rest of the draft. We'll have that 10th pick and then the 41st pick in the second round, 74th and so on and so forth. And remember, we do not have a fifth round pick. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video, just like this one, and like I was saying in the live stream, endless content coming just because it's an off season for the Burgundy and Gold, it is not for street scores. Because if anything, when it comes to draft, free agency, team building, this is the time where I put out my best and most consistent content as well. We got mock drafts coming. I'm going to do big boards on top positions of need in the draft. I may get some film sessions done. I'm going to be live streaming all of the time, even though we're not playing. Like I said, I'll probably live stream some playoff games. I'm definitely going to live stream during the Senior Bowl. Of course, I'm going to live stream during the draft. Y'all know that's like the most fun live streams. Then, I'm, of course, I'm going to live stream probably during the Combine. I'll live stream certain pro days that I care about like malik willis and guys like that and of course we're just gonna do the regular sunday live streams not every week but almost weekly where we just you know almost every sunday about an hour or two we just talk about everything the washington football team football in general the playoffs what's going on in basketball any sport anime video games all of that so y'all know that's regular sunday live stream where we're just talking about everything under the sun is gonna return as well but let's get to this game review let's get it All right, so starting with the quarterback, Taylor Heineke just went out there and basically showed us again why we need to go heavy on quarterback, whether it be through free agency, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr, Deshaun Watson, or maybe you trade for one. Me personally, I prefer the second option, which is quarterback. And I feel like even if you get one in free agency, depending on how good they are, unless they're Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson, you still need to at least take a quarterback later in the draft. But I prefer to go spend our first round pick on one of these quarterbacks. I believe in these quarterbacks. I'm higher on these quarterbacks than a lot of other people all of them of course are very situational 
If they go to the right situation, they can ball out like how Mac Jones did for the Patriots because he's definitely not the best quarterback in his past class, but he's in the best situation, and that's why it looks like it. I feel the same exact way with this draft class because, honestly, if Carson Strong goes to the right situation, I can see a scenario where he's the best quarterback out of this draft class. Malik Willis is very situational. He's my favorite quarterback, but at the same time, I can admit that there's only a very few select teams and offensive coordinators that can get him and turn him into a great franchise quarterback quarterback if he goes to the wrong situation he could end up being a tragic mess and so on and so forth for all of these guys really it's just certain guys are more adaptive and more scheme dependent than others but we'll see but yeah taylor heineke again just basically showed us why we need to go quarterback now that dime he threw to terry mclaurin deep was beautiful speaking of terry mclaurin and antonio gibson we need to stop everything i almost forgot they each reached 1,000 yards this season terry mclaurin receiving antonio gibson running and i thought antonio gibson was not going to reach it because he needed 109 yards he got 146 terry mclaurin needed 40 something yards he got 93 on just four catches man that, that was a great game i was happy to see that going into this game i preferred to lose for a higher draft pick but the number one priority was to get terry mclaurin to 1000 yards my second priority was to get a better draft pick and then third was antonio gibson we hit one and three so i'm happy again the main priority was to get terry mclaurin to number one so i appreciate taylor heineke for that at the at the very least he went nine for 18 120 yards wasn't a good game at all and he showed you the inaccuracies even though cam sims who's normally mr dependable mr make a play when he finally gets the ball thrown to him which is rare he had that one drop in the end zone that should have been a touchdown for taylor heineke to be completely honest but throughout the game you just see the reasons why taylor heineke at best is a bridge quarterback i think he may be a solid backup for us but he should not be your franchise quarterback we need to go attack quarterback heavy in this draft taylor heineke it showed you exactly why then moving on to running back Antonio Gibson looked great out there even with a really hurt offensive line not a lot of holes to work with that was probably his best game vision wise like I don't know what that was and where that came from where that's been all season but we finally started to see some real vision from him like a lot of his big plays weren't just like the hole was huge he just read the right play, hit the right hole at the right time, explosive, and made things shake. That was arguably Antonio Gibson's best game this season, even if it wasn't statistically. If you're looking at projection and how much he's developed as a running back, remember he's transitioning from receiver to running back, going from college to NFL. If we're looking at just vision, cutting, and things that matter most as far as running back goes, you could say this is probably Antonio Gibson's best game of the season, so that made me happy. And at the same time, Jonathan Williams and Jared Patterson look like Jim just imagine when we re-sign JD McKissick long term that's like offseason priority at least top five if once we get him back healthy our running back group I think is going to be electric I think that's a really good group it would be nice to maybe get like a Brian Robinson from Alabama to be like your bell cow and then Antonio Gibson can go to more like a Cordero Patterson Debo Samuel role I think that's ideal with JD McKissick in there you have Jared Patterson as your backup and then Jonathan Williams is just great as a practice squad running back I mean that's as good as it gets I think that right there would be perfect but yeah, I think this running back room overall is good. As long as Antonio Gibson can fix the fumbles and, and as long as he runs with the type of vision he ran with the, today against the Giants, we're good at running back. Then receiver Terry McLaurin balled out. I didn't really notice too many other guys doing much, but I'm just, again, I'm really happy that Terry McLaurin got his 1,000 yards. I think we need to re-sign him to an extension tonight. Like, I don't think it should hit 12 a.m. without Terry McLaurin getting a four-year deal worth all kinds of money. He needs to be one of the highest paid receivers in the NFL because he deserves it. And we have top four cap space in the NFL. So if anybody can do it, it's us. Get it done, Washington football team. Then moving on to the tight ends, nothing really notable outside of John Bates looking like one of the best players we had on the field today. His blocking was spectacular. The way he was able to set the edge on a few big runs that we had today, man. John Bates is arguably our best draft pick. And I'm going to literally do a whole video. I've already started working on it on our best draft picks ranked from best to worst. John Bates is at least top two, man. He, I mean, since Logan Thomas has been gone, it sucks. And you never want to see guys get hurt. And we've definitely been losing games because Logan Thomas hasn't been here. But it's made the way for John Bates to develop and grow right in front of our eyes. And he has. John Bates is definitely a great tight end, too. You could argue, even when Logan Thomas comes back healthy, the way that John Bates has been blocking and with his sure hands, 
it's like a tie between him and Logan Thomas for tight end one, and that's a great problem to have. So we right now, as long as Logan Thomas is healthy, we have two very quality tight ends. We should be able to run 12 personnel, two tight end sets, all we want next year moving forward. And I'm pretty sure whatever quarterback we get would love to do that because that's what Scott Turner wants to do most of the time. Scott Turner has been looking to run two tight end sets the whole time. We just haven't had two tight ends that could do it. Granted, Ricky Seals Jones has looked good at times, but he keeps getting hurt even more often than Logan Thomas has. So I'm glad that we have John Bates. We are set at tight end as long as Logan Thomas is healthy. And then offensive line wise, I mean, it's not much to say. It's just uh, like I've been saying all season. Our offensive line was literally top five in the NFL this entire season until the injuries hit us. And even after the injuries hit us, even after we were already on our fourth string center and our third string right guard at times, and even our backup right tackle, we still had statistically a top five offensive line in the NFL. At one point, like week 10 or somewhere, we were ranked the third best offensive line by like advanced statistics. Now, I'm not even talking about like an ESPN analyst. I'm not talking about pro football focus grades. I'm talking about like actual film advanced statistics we it was the rams number one eagles number two and us number three third best offensive line in the nfl so i literally feel like we have a great situation to bring a franchise quarterback in he's gonna have a top five offensive line he has deadly receivers especially if we attack free agency or draft heavy enough to get another one because i'm not dependent on curtis samuel even though i feel like this franchise will i feel like this franchise will move forward calculating that Curtis Samuel is a part of this team. I'm not. With my decisions in the offseason, I'm basically just going to pretend Curtis Samuel was never on the team. Me personally, but I feel like the Washington football team wouldn't. But I would like to go get some type of dynamic receiver either in free agency. I would love to get Allen Robinson, pay him whatever he wants. Or maybe you get a guy in the draft like a George Pickens from Georgia later in the draft or maybe a John Mechie somewhere in like the earlier part of the draft but not the first round. I'm down to do that, man. I think we have a great situation for a franchise quarterback remember Ken Zan Peace our quarterbacks coach Taylor Heineke doesn't really have much to work with a lot of his problems are physical limitations so it's not much you can do but if Ken Zan Peace gets his hands on a guy that's an athletic freak just a super high ceiling elite traits type of guy I think he could turn a guy like a Malik Willis Carson Strong Kenny Pickett Matt Corral any of those guys into a franchise quarterbacks because remember Ken Zan Peace was the quarterbacks coach when Baker Mayfield had the best season of his NFL career literally as soon as Ken Zan Peace left Baker Mayfield mechanics went all over the place accuracy went all over the place and now the Cleveland Browns are in the situation they're in right now that quarterbacks coach that made Baker Mayfield look like a top 15 quarterback in the NFL has been our quarterbacks coach for like a couple of years now. We just haven't given him a franchise quarterback to work with. So I think we'll be straight overall. But back to the offensive line. Today, they were on and off. They played better than what I expected with all of the injuries that we had. Because again, we only have like two starters on the offensive line out there consistently this season. But for what we had going on, they played pretty well and they had some holes opened up for Antonio Gibson and all of the running backs, really. I feel like they run blocked way better today than they pass blocked. But again, I'm just going to attribute that to injuries more than anything else. Now, moving on to coaching before we move to the defense, Scott Turner. I felt like today he was just trying stuff. It was definitely not a good play calling day, but at the same time with all of the injuries, what does he have to work with? And at the same time, I felt like the priority should not have been to win this game. I felt like it was time to sit the starters, get a lot of the younger guys out there to get some meaningful snaps so they can have some film to look at during the offseason to know what they should work on, what they're already good at, and all of that type of stuff. We should have let the young guys go out there and start. After Terry McLaurin hit 1,000 yards, they should have benched them and threw out all of the younger guys like Dax Milne and stuff like that. Same thing with offensive line, running back, and especially quarterback i don't know why we didn't at least give kyle allen a chance because we already know taylor heineke is not the franchise quarterback so i just feel like at the end of the day today's priority should have been just try stuff try a random trick play in your playbook and see if it works if it doesn't throw it away try these different groups of personnel just to see if it works the priority today should not have been to win it should have been to evaluate talent evaluate schemes personnel groupings decision making all of that type of stuff that should have been the priority and i feel like scott turner definitely did that at times because today definitely was not a good play calling day it just looked like he was literally just like all right well let's uh flip to a random page in the playbook uh let me close my eyes and put my finger on a random play uh this one let's do that now moving on to the defense the defensive line i mean without chase young and montez sweat it's never gonna be elite but jonathan allen continued his all pro season got a sack 
he should be an all pro he's definitely a pro bowler he already made it but i definitely feel like there's an argument for him to be an all pro as well deron Payne, we'll see about his future here he looked pretty straight out there i gotta watch the film to see how well he actually played or a lot of those guys tim settle played pretty well he had that easy fumble that came his way jake Fromm's just terrible as a georgia bulldogs fan i know like if anybody knows i know and then linebacker wise cole holcomb is still playing very well david mayo is out there on obvious running plays i feel like jamin davis should have played more for the reasons already stated as to why we should have prioritized development and evaluating players more than winning the game but jamin davis made a couple of plays out there y'all that has me excited about his future and it, of course he made that great play that great run stop in the backfield when he was at will linebacker and not mike now i am one of those people that wanted him to play mike linebacker a lot this year because i wanted to see if he can handle it you would never know that the answer was no until you tried it to see if it was a no so i'm glad they tried it a lot and consistently playing him in mike linebacker but it's clear and obvious now that he is not a mike linebacker at all he should be a will we need to go find a linebacker in the draft and or free agency aj johnson from the denver broncos is my favorite free agent linebacker and then darian beavers in the third round from cincinnati is probably my favorite draft linebacker as far as their talent and where they should get drafted as like a combination he's not the best linebacker in the class but he's the best linebacker you can get in the third round and again i feel like we need to spend our first round on quarterback and if daxton hill makes it to our second round pick you need to sprint to the podium and get him for free safety but again i just think we need to go get a true middle linebacker a true run stopper a guy that can get dirty and and stack against offensive linemen and shed them and make plays in the running game so go Holcomb can go back to his natural outside position where he makes his best plays and Jamin Davis we can see him more at will linebacker so he can make his best plays and then remember when we get Landon Collins back that's going to be huge as well because Landon Collins looked like one of our best players on our team when we finally moved him to linebacker and he was on IR for the past few weeks so it's just like it was so many injuries everywhere it was hard to evaluate certain things first of all it was hard to evaluate this team as a whole I think this team is way better than what people give it credit for I know a lot of people want to say injuries are an excuse but there's no team in the NFL that could have dealt with the injuries that we dealt with in one game the season made the playoffs none of that i don't care the chiefs the packers nobody on their backup quarterback technically their fifth string center at a certain point third string guard backup tackles fourth kicker all kinds i mean we were to the point where we were starting fifth and sixth string defensive ends like starting not playing them starting them I mean, linebacker group was getting decimated. Again, Landon Collins counts as that. The corners were out, in and out all year. I mean, we had we got to a point where Daryl Roberts and Torrey McTire were playing. Safeties were occasionally getting hurt. I was sad to see Cameron Curl get hurt there, but it looks like he should be straight. That was one of the main reasons I was saying such a starters, because you don't want somebody getting hurt so long that we don't even get them back till midseason next season. That would have been the worst case scenario, especially if we ended up winning and we lost somebody like a Cameron Curl for like the next Next 10 months that would have sucked but thank goodness he looked straight but going to the cornerback group I mean they look pretty straight I mean at the end of the day when you only allow seven points even though the seven points they allowed that Jake Fromm play that was terrible communication it was Jeremy Reeves and Bobby McCain everybody looked like they were in the wrong on that play but overall the cornerback group i guess they played well when you only allow some but i'm gonna have to look at the film because i wasn't paying much attention to them because we still had starters at that position out there and i didn't really care about what the starters were doing i was looking for the backups the younger guys to see how well they play to see if they should be on this team moving forward going into this next offseason to see if they should even be on the 90-man training camp roster let alone the 53-man roster moving forward so like guys like kendall fuller i wasn't really paying attention to them i have to go back and watch film on those guys to give an accurate review of how they played today and then safety group i mean bobby mccain you saw him making plays sadly though I'm, I'm a little worried about it i'm happy for him but i think he's gonna bring up those interceptions in his contract negotiations and the washington football team said they're already interested in signing him but now he may ask for so much more money because of those interceptions hopefully the washington football team looks at the fact that it was jake from he was getting those interceptions from but at the same time he's just gonna bring up in his contract negotiations him and his agent that i had this many picks this season and you need to pay me as such in reference to how much other safeties are getting paid in the nfl with the same amount of picks i 
had in this season that's more than likely going to come up in contract negotiations i hope it doesn't because if we're going to keep bobby mccain it better be for really cheap because y'all already know me i want to go get marcus williams in free agency and i would love to get daxton hill in the draft second round at the latest you may have to trade back up until the late first to get them to be completely honest with you because if it weren't for cal hamilton to me daxton hill is easily safety one but cal hamilton's a generational prospect you could probably even say cal hamilton was better than minka fitzpatrick better than derwin james better than jamal adams coming out of the draft so it's just like he's that great and that's why it's so sad that daxton hill is being overshadowed by that because it's such a generational talent above him that i feel like daxton hill should be at the very least safety second and third and he's that elite rangy free safety the exact thing that we would hope bobby mccain would be but he's younger more athletic faster all of that more range so i would love to get daxton hill but at the end of the day if, if we get Daxton Hill and Marcus Williams, I would do backflips. But I think if we don't get Marcus Williams, we will get Daxton Hill. If we get Marcus Williams, we won't get Daxton Hill. But either way, as long as we get one of them, I'm really happy. But I think we will re-sign Bobby McCain to at least a one-year deal. Hopefully, it's not a lot. Hopefully, it's not enough to where they're like, well, now we can't go pay Marcus Williams because we just paid Bobby McCain. Or we're paying Bobby McCain this much money. He better start so we don't need to get a Daxton Hill in a second. I hope whatever we give Bobby McCain does not interfere with us getting marcus williams or daxton hill or another top free safety in the draft of free agency please don't let it please that's why i'm sad about these interceptions it was fun to watch but i think those interceptions are going to probably end up hurting us in the long run because it may be a domino effect into preventing us getting marcus williams or daxton hill and then jack the rio i mean it was a lot of questionable play calls i still don't know why we have corners playing 15 yards off of the receiver on like a third and seven i still don't get that but i i'm just gonna assume that he was doing what scott turner was doing and just getting frisky and just calling random plays and seeing what works i'm just gonna assume i'm gonna give him the benefit of doubt and assume that it would be nice now that Vic Fangio has been fired as the head coach for the Broncos we could pick him up as a defensive coordinator because he would be an immediate and obvious upgrade over Jack DeRio but I just highly doubt I'm like 99.99% sure that will not happen but that would be nice but yeah Jack DeRio I mean it just looked like he was just doing stuff out there just like him and Scott Turner just like they were just hey, let's see if this works I mean it's not necessarily fitting our scheme it's not necessarily countering what the Giants are throwing at us let's just try it and see what happens so i can't critique them too much because i feel like this is more of an evaluation game and i feel like scott turner and jack de rio use this game as such more than ron rivera did like with the personnel groupings we ran out there and having those starters out there with the guys we had on the field it looked like we were trying to win at all costs but the play calling we were doing looked like it was said in the exact opposite so i don't know but yeah man that's the end of this video of course i'm gonna do like a review on the season like my favorite players who i'm most excited about who exceeded my expectations who let me down the most all of that type of stuff i'm a rank players like the top free agency signings we had this past season all of that type of stuff stay tuned for all of that and of course i gotta do a schedule dive because the information is already out there as to who we're gonna play next season so of course we're gonna go game by game and break that down as well as a video very soon we don't know the order yet but we do know who we will play but either way stay tuned for all of the content draft live streams free agency mock drafts everything just stay tuned for all of that and man i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to everybody that pulled up to the stream we got raided earlier today so that was fun by a bunch of packers fans that was really dope shouts out to everybody that left a like on the stream before they dipped out shouts out to everybody that donated even though i think it was just j mart so shouts out to j mart personally for donating man i appreciate that and of course shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you see scrolling on the screen right now i have no excuses this off season i have to get exclusive content for the sponsors to make y'all memberships worth it so so stay tuned for that as well. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.